Welcome to this session on the art of audio. My name is Mark Strippel, and I've been in the audio industry for more than 20 years at places like BBC Radio One Extra, BBC Asian Network, and BBC Sounds. I've done multiple roles. I've been a DJ broadcaster right through to senior commissioner of audio content. And over the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna share some of my thoughts on why the audio space is one of the most exciting places to be in media right now. And you'd also hear some useful advice from some of the talents I've had the pleasure of working with, including former BBC Asian Network and Saturday mashup presenter, Harps Core, one extra DJ host and presenter, Swazi Makali, Joel Borkway from Music Curation on Spotify, an audio radio executive from Something Else Productions, former BBC, Alex Lawless. And a big disclaimer, whilst this session is about the art of audio, this space matters to anybody working in the media, from making TV and production to YouTube, Web3, the metaverse, and everything in between. So I love the art form of audio, the intimacy of the medium, uh, the ability to have that freedom, you're not locked into duration in quite the same way as other formats, from live in the moment, communal shared moments where you bring audiences together right through to on-demand lean back listening. From a hard-hitting discussion right through to a special performance of behind the scenes moments like a live lounge with your favorite artist. Audio provides a great starting point for brand new talent and bringing that next wave, that next generation through. Uh, I've always been passionate about discovering and giving opportunities and championing that brand new wave. Um, I was able to bring through, give first BBC contracts to people like Maya Jama, Tiffany Calver, Big Zoo, Kenny Allstar, Gus Khan, through to journalists like Amal Rajan, helping those journeys through from audio through to TV. And there's a few more reasons why we love the art form of audio. The thing I really love about audio is how intimate it is and how it creates an environment that builds a real special bond between the host and the listener. Um, there's no better way to build relationships and levels of engagement with audiences than through audio. Uh, we see that in terms of love for advertising and in terms of love for content. Uh, there really is nothing better. Also how easy it is that you really don't need very much special equipment to like go and make something really special. You know, even though we have access to things like YouTube and streaming videos online and social media even, you know, for that matter, where you can watch people's content, audio brings people together in a very different way. When you're listening to something through the speakers, you get to paint your own picture of what you think it looks like, what you think this sounds like. Um, and I love that. I absolutely love that. Whether that be through the radio, it could be audio books, it could be podcasts. But audio really, really connects people in a, in a very, very different way. Audio can be a sandbox, a space for trying new ideas and pushing the boundaries. One of my commissions was Brown Girls Do It Too. It was British Podcast of the Year 2021, where we really challenged cultural taboos around young Asian women talking about sex and relationships, informed, authentic, and really funny, with amazing new talents with Poppy and Rubina. I was also part of the commission for BBC Three's The Rap Game UK, which was a bit of a new frontier for BBC Three going into that space, a need for authenticity from the genre, understanding the audience in a different way. Uh, we took our authenticity from One Extra and the audio platform and a closer understanding of content and hard to reach audiences, and that helped us take more creative risks editorially around language, uh, and brought the channel its highest proportion of young male viewers. Um, for me, authenticity and credibility, understanding the scene, the genre, the editorial, allowed us to be more creative in our treatment uh, and delivered greater results. Audio doesn't exist in isolation from other mediums. For me, that relationship between our audio content and YouTube has always been important. Our short form videos, the signature formats, like the freestyle format Fire in the Booth on One Extra with Charlie Sloth helped us push past 1.3 million subscribers and brought new engaged users right through to the brand and to the show. The relationship between a TV or Netflix, Amazon Prime series and audio can be absolutely key. For a series like BBC Three's The Rap Game UK, an audio treatment alongside the broadcast can add context, depth and personality and engage audiences differently and more deeply across a range of touch points. Over on BBC Sounds, Doctor Who Redacted, 
The current spin-off audio drama offers the potential to explore new narratives and ideas with imagination. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Roots into Audio uh, and how to use the power of that perspective across a range of disciplines. Um, a few things you should know about me, uh, I grew up on a council estate in West London, Hounslow, without a network or contacts. So I went to a normal comprehensive school, no family background in media. My dad was an engineer, uh, worked for BT at Heathrow Airport. I had to create my own content brands and platforms and formats and build an audience around them to get ahead. I loved radio and produced my first radio show in GCSE Media Studies, but it wasn't until I was 24 years old that I had my first experience um, in community radio over at Westside Radio, still exists over in Hamwell, West London, uh, helped me with core skills training and production and presentation. That was three years ahead of me joining One Extra, and had I not found that opportunity, I wouldn't have found my way into the BBC. But I picked up skills across my career from a number of different roles, things rarely go in straight lines. I studied, I did a first year of a degree at the College of West, Ealing College of West London uh, before jumping out and going into law, studied law and history at Queen Mary and Westfield College uh, before doing postgraduate law school and working in the city. Uh, that legal foundation complements my creative side uh, and my, my music background. It still helps me today when it comes to understanding the business, uh, when it comes to talent contracts or rights agreements. And to pay for law school, uh, my fees, I would promote my own parties and raves and club nights. That grassroots experience of building and marketing experiences that bring people together has been absolutely vital to me and continues to be part of my DNA uh, when it comes to creating new content formats uh, for the services that I've led. I also picked up experience in the music industry after getting into uh, production with a group called Punjabi Hit Squad and we signed to Def Jam UK. Um, which led to having that background and credibility in the music scene uh, and having an understanding of what it means to be both leading and a commissioner of, uh, of audio platforms and visual platforms, but also understanding what it's like to be talent and on the other side of the mic. I asked a few friends how they made their first steps into the audio world. My first steps into the radio world were actually some of the most important ones and ones that I won't forget because that's where it all started, right? And for me, it began at uni. My mentors constantly told me to take on as much work experience as I could um, and to say yes to everything and decide if I like it later. So that's exactly what I did. I took on as much work as I could. I sat in so many different radio stations. I sat in different studios. I sat with different presenters and naturally fell into community radio and got my own show. And I will never forget the moment where I sat there for the first few shows, turning up that, um, you know, the mic fader and that adrenaline rush that I got. Those steps are so important because that's where you learn your craft. That's where you understand what you're about as a presenter. That's where you understand your listeners and how to engage them, you know, engage with them, what kind of topics work with them, what kind of music do they like listening to so I could be selective with my playlist, what kind of um, interviews did they want to hear and really that's where you make your mistakes and I think I remember making very very simple mistakes like um, maybe pronouncing something differently or pressing the wrong button on the desk or not understanding how to get into a, a you know a topic and coming out but those were the steps that I feel live with me till today and they're the most important ones so I will never forget my early days of being on radio and really finding my voice and enjoying it and embracing it and becoming better and better as the days went on. My first steps into the radio world were similar to most. I went through Manchester Student Radio Fuse FM and quickly after joining Fuse, I joined Pi Radio, which is based in Stockport. Um, during my time at Pi, I took part in masterclasses, facilitated a few myself and hosted their morning breakfast show. Um, as well as Pi, I made sure to get my name out by providing guest mixes to stations all around the UK. I got an internship at a place called Total Politics magazine. I just harassed loads of people being like, please let me come and do a thing. And I was so broke uh, and I slept on my cousin's floor um, and uh, I happened to get the BBC job. And so my first actual radio job was on Radio 4 and it was a baptism of fire. Um, 
I learned an incredible amount in the first four months there from a journalistic perspective, an entertainment perspective, a quality perspective, like how to make a great program. Um, and then I went on in the trainee scheme to work in TV, um, on uh, like BBC sports stuff, like comedy, and then ultimately ended up at Radio 1 and 1 Extra. So um, yeah, basically, there's so many different ways in. And just because you start in one place doesn't mean you're going to end up somewhere else. My journey into radio was a crazy one. So I started off as a presenter, as a host at church, and then I went into basketball and started interviewing very, very tall basketball players. And then my boyfriend said, look, there's an advert right there to go and be the next KISS presenter. And so I thought, well, what do I know about radio? He said, oh, don't worry about it. Pretend you're already a radio presenter and go down to the competition. So I went down to the competition. It was in Stratford. It was in this glass box. And you had to read like this little bit of a script and bring your personality. And I just thought, oh, what are the chances? Let me go for it. And so I did the audition. And to be honest, I thought, well, who knows? And then the next day I got a call to say, Swazi, you've made the top 20 Academy. And I thought, what? Not me. I've got no radio experience. I've never even been inside a radio studio before. But I went through and made the top 20 and then made the top five. And then in October 2016, I won. I became the, the latest KISS presenter. And so from KISS, I started on KISS Fresh. Shout the kids fresh and did Saturdays and Sundays and bit by bit I made my way to doing the breakfast show on Saturday and Sunday mornings and now I'm over on Radio 1 Extra which I absolutely adore and so my radio journey has been just incredible I would not change my story but for anyone who is thinking well how do I get into the industry everyone's got different stories everyone's got different routes and you just never know what your story is going to be so come on just go and do it now, I really do think we are in the most incredible time for audio. When I was 16, I had literally no idea how to access the BBC or other broadcasters. I just simply couldn't see it happening for me. Now, recently I was at the podcast show 2022, and for me, that gathering crystallized the range of opportunity that exists in audio today. From BBC Sounds to Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible and Acast, right through to Apple, Patreon, YouTube, and many more. This really is an age of opportunity for audio and thinking of this particular children's media conference, we're all trying to authentically connect with the core target audience that you are part of, Gen Z, thinking ahead to Gen Alpha, audiences that you know better than anyone. We're gonna think about the types of roles and skill sets required in the audio world. Uh, we try to cover a lot in a mini masterclass. You know, you're getting across radio, audio, podcasting, uh, within the space of this masterclass, but I'm going to give you an example of the types of roles that I've had experience of, of working with and alongside. Um, take, for example, uh, a massive live audio broadcast on One Extra for Glastonbury, that seminal moment in 2019 with Stormzy walking out on the pyramid stage, where on One Extra we were able to broadcast that performance, but we were able to build up in advance on radio with a pre party, um, record backstage intimate content with authentic access and close with an after party, bringing together the cream of the crop with a range of artists from the scene, engaging audiences differently with cultural depth, but also curate playlists and special programming on BBC Sounds on the app, uh, ahead of the, the, the event, weeks in advance building up, but also post the event to retain that legacy. Uh, let me break it down for you, and it's probably worth you thinking about how would you execute that moment? What kinds of disciplines would you look at to amplify that core piece of content. Now it takes a whole team to deliver those moments. I may have been the head, the commissioner of that piece of content who greenlit that piece of activity, but delivering an award-winning moment requires great presentation, the talent, DJ Target and Tiffany Calver on the front line delivering that moment for us. A production team comprising of an editor, producer, an assistant producer who skillfully plan, structure and execute the production of the show a highly skilled visualization team who capture our audio moment for YouTube and social media, and technically gifted audio engineers who ensure that we could broadcast live from Worthy Farm. How else would you execute this uh, in 2022? Um, it may be for Spotify, you would look at Spotify Live, or you would look at Clubhouse type formats to have a listening party uh, pre, post, and during the event. You would look at different ways to capture that live conversation and narrative around the big live moment from stage. So from independent creators producing their own podcasts, 
right through to producers and curators for streaming services and DSPs. There are multiple roles in this space. And here's a snapshot of some of the types of roles that you might want to consider. Um, so my current role, I work at Spotify um, and I make playlists. So I make playlists um, for different genres, mainly in hip hop, R&B, um, but also in Afrobeats and Caribbean genres, so let's dance already in Soka. Um, and I also help produce a podcast called Who Be Talks. Um, and that job entails choosing guests, um, content and concepts we're going to be speaking about. Um, also listening to a lot of music um, to to make it work in those in those playlists um, and stuff like that. Um, and stuff like working at Beats and Juice and probably helps me get into that kind of role because it, it does require a lot of listening. Um, and I did that when I worked at BBC Institution. I am a, an executive producer for something else, which is owned by Sony Music Entertainment. So I'm the editorial last line of defence, but I am also um, like the creative leader. I'm there to facilitate what the producer wants to achieve and to basically get the team together. It's sort of like um, making sure you've got everybody in the right job so that they can deliver on their jobs. Uh, themselves and come up with creative solutions to creative challenges. Um, it, previous jobs I've done are, um, I was a producer at Radio 1 and 1 Extra for a long time. I produced Charlie Sloth on Drive Time and then Late Night Radio 1 Show and The Rap Show. Um, I produced DJ Target for years, produced Clara Ampho. So like over the course of that time, you build up like your skill set in terms of things that you need to learn about being a radio producer. Um, I then went on to be commissioning exec at Radio 1 for a while, which is basically where you sit in the Radio 1 commissioning team and you make sure that all the shows, so I looked after all of the specialist output on Radio 1, making sure that they're all pulling in the same direction. They've all got like the same vision for what Radio 1 should sound like and that they're delivering great content that isn't going to get us sued. I work at the BBC as a content assistant producer and assistant producer for BBC Radio 1, 1 Extra and 6 Music. In my day-to-day, -day, I schedule tracks of shows, devise music notes and work through music reports and take on bits of audio editing where it's needed. The BBC has been such an exciting milestone for me and without being moist, but I just am going to be moist, um, it's been an absolute dream come true. So we're now at the close of the session. Uh, hopefully that has given you a sense of the potential opportunities that exist. Um, here's a bit of advice uh, from a range of creatives across the industry. Some of the things you might want to be thinking about. For anyone that's wanting to get into the world of audio in 2022, in this day and age, I would definitely say try and focus your energy on you. You are key in this. What is it that makes you different to everyone else? What is it that you bring to the table? Is there something that you know works that somebody else might not have come across yet? Because... The hardest thing about being in this industry at this time, especially, is that there's so much that has been done. And it's really hard sometimes to try and figure out what is there or is there something that someone hasn't seen yet or they haven't heard yet or they haven't done yet. You really need to try and do a little bit of research on the side to try and figure out a way that makes you look different when you're sat at that table. When someone says your name, can they understand what you're about straight away? What is it about the, the, the content that you're creating that grabs people's attention? Is it setting a trend? Is it shareable? Is it viral? Is it something that connects with all ages? Um, you know, really try and understand what it is that you're trying to create. Because for me, I feel the creative aspect um, you know, irrespective of what, what medium it is, the creative aspect is key. Content is key. Really try and, and figure out who you are, what you're about as a broadcaster and what it is that makes you shine. The best piece of advice for getting into audio is um, to, to start making. There is nothing that should stop you from making audio content if you want to. All you need is a smartphone. Like, you can start going interviewing people, you can start putting your radio shows together, like, whatever it is you want to do, give it a go, because the barrier for entry is so low in terms of just the technology you need. Then you just wanna hit deadlines. Like, if it's not perfect, that's okay, but hit the deadline. 
be tenacious. It takes a lot of effort to get in through the door. Um, and remember, above all else, that the bubble, the media bubble is actually shrinking. The number of people who do jobs is only getting like smaller and smaller. And the different things that you will do in your career, it, it, like it's an enormous number of things that you will try and do over the course of your career. So don't be too hung up on trying to get that perfect first job. Get a job that matches for you. Work with people that you like enjoy being around and that you're going to learn from. But like there's nothing to stop you from pivoting from radio to TV or TV to making web content and becoming a YouTube creator. Like all of these skills are related. Ultimately, whether it's making an entertainment show or a narrative factual podcast, all as we're doing is storytelling. And um, if you keep that in mind, you're not going to go wrong as long as you keep enjoying what you do. My advice for someone wanting to get into audio would be to like study audiences. What audiences do you want to reach? Um, or if there's a particular company you want to work for, what audience do they want to reach and kind of study trends and um, what 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 formats are best for that for, for that audience? Because I feel like that is, I guess why audio is made is to reach people. Um, so know who you're trying to reach and kind of tailor that content towards them. Um, and people will see that, you know what you're talking about. What advice would I give for people getting into audio in 2022? I'd say positive nuisance. When I got into radio, I knew no one and I quickly found out that it was so, so key to reach out to people. Don't get me wrong, it can be scary and sometimes you won't get replies, but when you can do, it feels so much more exciting and you never know what doors you may open by sliding into someone's inbox. I would also say gaining experience, whether that be getting involved in community radio, shadowing or even building your own. There's so many free programmes which make DIY radio even more easy to create and all free as well. So I would definitely say get started. My advice for anyone that wants to get into radio or audio in 2022 is this, and this is advice that I even give myself. Do not try to sound like anyone else. You've got a story, you've got a voice that no one else has. And so why spend your time trying to sound or be like someone else for all of your listeners just to go to listen to them? Make sure that your ideas come from your heart and all the things that you love to talk about, I promise you, there will be a listener. There will be someone who loves the same ideas and we'll lock into your show or your podcast or whatever it is you go on to do. So in 2022, when the world is crazy and there's such a temptation to sound and be like everyone else, stand firm, don't do that, sound like yourself and I promise you all the big things will happen.